It's disappointing when men and women who have been standing with us in the battle change their strategies to support an approach they once discouraged. In 2008, WND founder Joseph Farah wrote None of the Above, a book urging Americans not to settle for either Barack Obama or John McCain for president. Less than 24 months ago, Farah considered Romney the most dangerous man in America, a wolf in sheep's clothing who did not deserve a vote if he was running against Satan himself. It must have been difficult for him to come around to endorsing Mitt Romney this time. While I disagree with his decision, I do acknowledge that the sheer fear of extending this abomination another four years is nearly too much to bear leading to the temptation to the compromise of holding their noses and voting for Romney. The Bible is loaded with such fear-based decisions. Of all of Israel's mighty men, only Joshua and Caleb refused to cower to the pervasive fear of facing, no less slaying, the illegal alien giants exercising squatters' rights in their promised land. None of the mighty men dared square off against Goliath save one shepherd boy, would later be king. We must not forget that it is Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who still puts kings on thrones and presidents in power. It is our job to cast a moral vote and the job of Yahweh to make the final decision. If the day comes when our nation fears man more than fearing God, we've already lost our nation. So, my philosophy for Joseph Farah and all Americans is trust Yahweh God and risk the consequences. Flow in faith and trust, repent and pray for spiritual awakening in our nation, and hope for an undeserved miracle. And I don't mean a miracle as in a write-in vote. There are two bona fide candidates on other party tickets who are viable moral options. Oh, you haven't heard? We actually have a choice between two principled candidates for whom to vote. Either former Congressman Virgil Goode, who is a presidential candidate on the Constitution Party ticket, or Tom Hoefling of the America's Party. Both are outstanding on the issues, pro-life, pro-personal responsibility, pro-Constitution and Bill of Rights, anti-same-sex marriage, for low taxes, etc. Either would be a moral vote a vote that won't cause us to lose sleep from such a huge moral compromise voting for Obama or Romney. But for those who prefer a more pragmatic plan for winning, with a tangible example from history, one comes to mind. In the early 1850s, the two major political parties were the Democrats and the Whigs. Abraham Lincoln was a Whig, but switched to a new fringe third party, the Republicans, when a moral issue, slavery, ripped the party apart. And even though Abraham Lincoln was not even on the ballot in all the states, and even though the Republican Party had never won a presidential race in their young history, history tells us that God put Abraham Lincoln on the throne. I know a little about this because I am a direct descendant of Abraham Lincoln's maternal grandmother. Today, the Republicans are divided over moral issues like abortion and same-sex marriage as party leadership abandons areas of traditional strength in favor of becoming more like the GOP's largest political opponent. Obama is wrong on virtually all counts, but he's a true believer of redistributing the wealth from the rich to private sector working class to the government working class. But getting back to Romney, he claims to be a moral man and a conservative, but his record in elected office on abortion and same-sex marriage falls far short of what was the moral Republican platform by his promoting and implementing a socialized medicine program in Massachusetts that was an inspiration for Obamacare. There's no way to deny it. Romney promoted $50 abortions and he looked the other way on same-sex marriage, pretending it was out of his hands as a matter of established law. By no measure is Romney a true fiscal or moral conservative. So I agree with Joseph Farah's book, None of the Above, as its philosophy applies to Obamni and Rombana. But this year we have moral choices 
by people who have worked hard to get on the ballot in many states. So, to Joseph Farah and the rest of this nation, I'll leave you with this. The bottom line is that we are not responsible for who is elected. We are only responsible for our vote, and we should be grateful that we have more choices than the obomni rombana dialectic. As John Quincy Adams put it, duty is ours, results are God's.